I'm Ikui, Naknamalita, and this is my channel, The Midnight Librarian. Today I am doing a vlog. I'm gonna decide to do a weekend vlog. I'm looking a little rough today. Please bear that. <laughs> Have like, just, oh my god. Yeah. I'll get into it later. But right now, I think I'm gonna go to my local nursery, get some starts for my garden, in hopes that I can garden tomorrow. I decided to take you along with me. So excuse the mess back there. I did change my hair a bit because I just wanted it off my neck. Um, but yeah, I decided to vlog for this weekend. <laughs> um, you're kind of getting the real me right now. I'm, a, I'm still recovering from poison oak um, that I got last weekend being out and about. Um, not like <laughs> getting plants like this, but kind of. Um, I... I'm still recovering from it. I got poison oak like all over me. You can kind of tell where I have um, <laughs> still some healing to go to as well as uh, just lotion on to try to subside the itching. I went out to collect last weekend with, with a couple people safely. We did it really safely, but we went inland and I was really happy to go. They, I asked if I could tag along because it was actually for a um, this group of non- nonprofit agency that I used to work for that is trying to uh, reconnect indigenous youth to culture and gathering is definitely part of that and I like despite it being youth or um, sometimes it's youth and sometimes it's adults because a lot of us need some reconnection um, I know I myself in particular so I asked if I could tag along and they were more than happy to have me tag along and <laughs> I made the mistake of that, like, of course, that they warned about was just know the difference between hazel and poison oak because someone the previous weekend cut poison oak with their hazel. Um, luckily, they didn't get a reaction, but they just wanted us to be aware, and I made that mistake. I thought I was clipping hazel, and I clipped poison oak, and despite being safe and coming home and immediately tossing all of my clothes in the wash and bathing with Technu, I ended up stripping um, poison oak branches and getting the sap on my fingers and all over me. I woke up two days later with my face just completely swollen because I got it in my eyes and on my mouth and all over the rest of me. I have it on my ears and down both sides of my neck, on my chest, on my boobs, on my arms, on my, it's like all over my upper body and in splotches on my lower body because I didn't realize it was poison oak until the second day I was stripping this hazel and realized that some of this hazel was poison oak. So if you go out, I know that um, if you go out safely, like hiking, gathering, or um, camping, please be aware of what poison oak, poison ivy, and poison sumac looks like. Um, apparently, you can also get this type of rash from mango beels, <laughs> which I didn't know until I went to the doctor on Monday. But particularly in California slash the west coast of the United States, I know has quite a bit of poison oak and poison ivy, um, so just be aware going out in it. Uh, I'm fairly lucky and terms of not being extremely allergic um yes my face got puffy but like 
and I keep hearing that the sap is like the worst part to get on you. Um, like, but I was still able to see, I was still able to breathe. Um, I just had to get some steroids from my doctor to be able to reduce the swelling. And like, I keep hearing horror stories of other people going, I have to get cortisone shots or I had to go to the ER because I couldn't breathe. And it was just like, I am very lucky to have gotten the reaction that I did, despite how much it got on me. Um, and despite me being <laughs> ready to get like sandpaper to my skin right now. Um, so it's been a week since I have first got exposed to it. I'm still dealing with the rash. It's still fairly all over me. I am still very itchy. I'm actually realizing that um, moving around constantly throughout the day helps me more than just sitting at my computer, which sucks because that's what I do for my job. And it also sucks because my partner now has it as well. So <laughs> we're both like really frustrated right now. Um, but it was nice to kind of get out and uh, weekends tend to be my days of doing catching up on errands um, and doing around the house stuff. But I do tend to listen to my audiobook a lot, so whether or not that makes for good content, we'll see. Um, this morning I was able to check in on uh, Kim from Book Native Book Lady Warrior and Kay from I Love Books Okay being on uh, Chanel from Chanel Times channel discussing Black Sun, which I was eager to hear their thoughts on. Um, there was another host as well, uh, BC, I think. Um, I'll link all those all that information down in the um, description down below if the uh, video link is still up. Um, it was a live show. It was really fun. I was glad to be able to like listen to Kim's thoughts on it and Kay's thoughts on it um, as well as other people's. It's really interesting to me. Um, I read it a while ago but it's um, yeah it's still a book series that I'm excited to get into and can't wait for the sequel for. I also was able to make it to Erin and Danny's book club discussion on um, In My Own Moccasins by Helen Knott. That one was fairly intense and I'm glad that I got to be a part of that discussion as well as we talked through the book. That was really nice. So I did that this morning. Um, I didn't get up as early as I wanted to. I wanted to get these plants before all of that and then have time to like plant afterwards but now it's like almost... 4.30. Um, I did get, oh, I do have some um, food with me now. This is just squirt, but I want it to be alcohol, but I don't want to mess up whatever medications I'm on um, with that, uh, with the poison oak. So uh, it's almost four o'clock. I probably won't be doing any gardening today just because it is fairly windy outside, hence why I have my hair in a braid as well and if you can't hear it <laughs> through the window. Um, but it's, it always kind of deters me to want to garden while it's windy out and we've been having freeze warnings. Um, so it's probably not the best time, but I um, was eager, I was worried that I was getting too late in the season to get some of the stuff that I wanted to get. But I also figured I'll do a little plant haul if you guys are interested in that. That There are several uh, booktubers that also do plant stuff. Um, I. I'm not the best with house plants. <laughs> I've actually, I think, just killed my um, fall fern. <laughs> so, but I love gardening. I'm not very good at it, but I try. I know every summer I usually typically try. Um, this will be my fourth summer trying again. Um, usually I'm getting pretty good with pumpkins, um, but that's not going to be until later. But there's things that I, I just try to do every summer, and this summer some tomatillo plants extremely excited about. I have been obsessed making pozole verde. You are supposed to add cilantro and unfortunately I'm part of the like 10% of the population that thinks that cilantro tastes like soup. So and I'm just really excited to try to see if I can get them to grow here. It's always kind of I'm always kind of hesitant to see what can grow here and what can't, mostly because uh, this area of California is really wonky and that we get a lot of the cold weather from Oregon and Washington. Um, but occasionally we get the summer heat of uh, that California is kind of known for. Um, but we also get a lot of fog. That is mostly what we're known for, fog and 
particularly during the spring wind. So it's been a little interesting to try to figure out what works here. And it's frustrating because what works like 10 minutes inland may not work here along the coast. So it's interesting to try to figure that out. I also got various different kinds of tomato plants. We have a, uh, I believe cherry tomatoes, sweet 100 cherry tomatoes, and we have early girl slicing tomatoes here, as well as some sun sugar tomatoes. I usually try to vary the tomatoes because they work well inland, but not always on the coast. So I try to get a varying kind that way I at least have some growing. I also am going to do some spinach consuming spinach we actually um, do spinach more than we do lettuce so I still might get some lettuce later on um, but right now spinach is like what we are needing I also we have also been consuming a lot of onions so I wanted to try to do some walla walla onions as well um, my mom had a request for me to do beans so I did blue lake pool beans and then I did this last year and it worked out really well. And that is that I am going to be doing broccoli. Um, yeah, it worked out really well. And that's something that my family has been want, wanting as well. It's one thing with like doing a garden is trying to figure out what we will eat versus what we won't. And what's kind of just, I have a limited garden space. So just trying to figure all that out. Um, it's with everyone's different tastes. So there's like four of us living here. Um, so like trying to figure out veggies that everyone eats. Um, last year I planted chard and they actually survived through the winter, but none of us eat chard. Trying to see if I could grow and, and it did great. And unfortunately I just, I don't, we don't eat any of it. Uh, for Mother's Day I got some California poppies for my mom, which she already came in and found out and she's super excited. She's been wanting to just plant California poppies all over our property. I also got some herbs. I have some rosemary which I tend to use a lot when um, particularly during winter when I do my soups and stews I also try to do this every year and every year it fails somehow and that is basil I absolutely love basil I love Italian cooking um, I can't always do it just because uh, my partner uh, prefers that isn't the biggest tomato fan um, and prefers if he has a tomato fan he prefers Mexican spices um which like I've tried growing cilantro I can't pick it it smells disgusting um but basil I usually try to do every year and every year it fails but I am not giving up <laughs> one thing I found last year that I did on um on a whim was lemon cucumber and that was perfect because my mom has been um obsessed with these and so has my partner so this works out fine my brother and I do not enjoy them as much at all <laughs> but lemon cucumbers I have several of these um, plants and if they were as abundant as they were last year it'll be perfect and then zucchini which we also uh, don't consume as much as I would like just because my brother's not a big fan I am currently reading Native Bees and How We Can Save Them um, by Paige Embry. And I've been wanting to get this for a while because honeybees are not, I mean, they're naturalized to the United States and Northern California, but they're not native. And so I've always been questioning, like, how do we support our native bees and our not native pollinators? So one of the ways we can do that is getting one of these little houses. Um, I think they call it a pollinator house, but ultimately just something of various sizes of holes in it where um, bees as well as different other types of uh, buggy pollinators um, can put themselves in here and kind of have a home. So I'm hoping to hang this somewhere close to my garden to kind of like help the pollinators come. <laughs> But yeah, that book I'm still struggling to get through. It's not that I'm not enjoying it, it just kind of gets a little textbooky. There's a lot of scientific uh, names in there and it's just sometimes it's hard for me to get into. So I've been reading that for the last portion of April and so far in May. Like I said though, it's not bad. It's really interesting actually. I didn't know that honeybees actually cannot pollinate tomatoes because there's certain pollinators for certain 
um, plants and like bumblebees are really good with pollinating tomato because they actually have a vibration that gets the pollen off so yeah I'm just and this book has just been fun in terms of trying to figure out how to support uh, support um, our local pollen local native pollinators so that's been really fun. Right, I've been enjoying nonfiction, but I realized that I kind of want to delve more into it. I like these little micro histories and I actually found a list recently on Goodreads of little micro history nonfiction books that I hope to get more into. Um, I'm also listening to An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir um, for the May the Force Read With You readathon um, hosted by Eric from Break Even Books. So I'm reading, I'm listening to this book. I'm not sure how to feel about it. Fantasy I found, I do like some fantasy. I'm leaning more towards enjoying sci-fi more, but there's like the strictly fantasy series that I'm questioning if I really enjoy fantasy. And of course it's these series that is much beloved on booktube. And <laughs> I'm just kind of realizing what I like and dis dislike. Um, Strange the Dreamer. I enjoyed it, but not enough to continue on. And I'm having the same feeling with Ember in the Ashes by Sapa Tahir. And I don't know if it's because the same narrator who narrated Strange the Dreamer is uh, narrating Elias's chapters in Ember in the Ashes. Me, I would prefer adult fantasy. Maybe I need to get away from YA fantasy. I just have to see. I enjoyed The Bone Witch um, by Rin Chupeco. That was pretty interesting. I enjoyed the dark fantasy elements of that. And it was YA. My only thing is, and I purchased the rest of the series. Uh, my <laughs> That should be here today too. Um, so if it comes in, I'll show you mostly because like you'll probably already know what it looks like. But the series itself, like as a whole, is artistically beautiful. Um, but the, um, I think I'm gonna have to, that one I listened to as well, and I think I'm gonna have to read it physically from now on because the narration for um, Tia was um, a little whiny to me. So, but that ending of The Bone Witch, that, mm, that got me. I'm like, all right, a total 180 from Strange the Dreamer. Strange the Dreamer had me like invested up until the ending. And then as soon as the ending came, I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to know what happens afterwards. Okay, so for the rest of the day, I think I'm going to, it's almost um, five. I need to relook up how to make, um, we're doing going to do chicken pot pie tonight from scratch. Um, but I need to clean the kitchen, um, do the dishes before I start that, and then at least have it ready to go because it's like a two cooking, two part cooking process and that I cook the filling partially first and then cook the, all of it as a whole. And then I need to do more laundry. I swear I've washed everything three times just to make sure that there are no more poison oak oil on everything. I feel like I'm wasting so much right now because we typically try to reuse towels a couple times and as well as uh, our clothing but right now like we don't trust anything that once it's touched us like we're just like oh, it's going in the, in the wash I guess because we are so tired and thankfully it's just um, my partner and I who have it my brother and my mom don't have it thankfully but so I'll check. I'll probably start cleaning the kitchen and listening to more of Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir and check in with you later. <laughs> this is already like so far in and I haven't really t read anything yet. Hello. It is much later now. It's almost 1130 on Saturday. I didn't end up doing as much as I would have liked tonight after doing dinner we I ended up doing an impromptu dog bath because we wanted to make sure that Goose didn't have any poison oak oils on him and we also decided to shampoo the carpet because I peeled <laughs> the poison oak branches here right here in the living room so just wanted to be sure I'm really hoping it's not on 
the cat. That will be a cruel joke. I did get further into Ember in the Ashes by Savage Tahir. I am, the pacing has picked up a little bit. I think I'm 30% in right now, which I'm kind of glad of because for a while it was just day after day after day as opposed to like a bigger time lapse <laughs> and it was just, it was for some reason when it's going like that it kind of like gets on my nerves a little bit of just like oh this is gonna be a long book but um yeah so brad went to go to bed um but yeah the reason why i did an impromptu dog bath and shampooed the carpet was because brad came home and he had much his uh poison oak spread further so he had like a little dot about that big on his back and it spread all over his back um and he didn't even touch the stuff so I'm glad that he didn't get it <laughs> directly otherwise I have no idea how his body would react to considering he I think now has more of a poison oak rash than I do so and I touched it I peeled it so <laughs> whatever that says um, but yeah, he is going to bed, um, getting ready for bed, and I am going to stay up a bit and see if I can't get closer to finishing Our Native Bees by Paige Embry. But I had some breakfast, um, took some steroids for the, uh, poison oak. <laughs> um, my face is looking a little better, I see. Um, not nearly as puffy. I do feel some remnants, like bumps from the rash. My lip still feels a little funny. Um, it's like an, it almost feels like an extra layer of skin is on it um but i've been using some lip repair stuff to hopefully combat that um but otherwise it is still pretty all over me last night was a little rough just because of course like after putting calamine lotion on and letting it dry and then get, getting into bed like i was fine but then once i got settled into bed like everything itched so, and from what I hear from my partner who has been working this whole time, he's had it. I mean, I have too, but I've been lucky enough to be home with it, but he has to go to work. Um, today he said that it feels like one of the worst days, um, mostly cause he has it everywhere. He has it all over his back, on his inner thighs, um, on his stomach. So, and on his uh, elbows, and he is a butcher, so he has to wear a smock that goes to his elbows. So, <laughs> and the cutting board is like right at his stomach. So he's been having a terrible time. So I've been trying to like comfort him in little ways um, because we aren't physically touching right now because we don't want to spread it any further. Uh, supposedly the rash isn't spreadable once it's a rash, but if it's like oozy, it is, um, which of which neither of us have, but we don't know how else he's getting it. So we're just being extra cautious. So little things. So I'm like, 
um, telling him I love him a lot, a lot of words of affirmation. I've been cooking some of his favorite meals, um, and just kind of spending some quality time with him as well as just trying to make this as comfortable as possible, um, by making sure that everything is clean and thoroughly clean. So, um, what I have to do today, um, I want to plant, um, the California poppies that I bought yesterday that I showed you because that was part of my Mother's Day gift for my mom. She was super excited. I wish I got her reaction on film, but I'm still uncomfortable with filming outside and in front of other people. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to plant, she has a specific spot for me to plant it in her yard. Um, I'll probably put in a couple other places within her yard so she has it. Um, we did a little, my grandma and my niece actually did a little garden for her last year or the year before where she has a bird bath that birds don't actually get into because her cat <laughs> just likes to drink from it and her cat is like a bird killer. So, um, uh, she has a little garden around it and she men recently mentioned that she doesn't like some of the plants that my grandma chose. No offense to my grandma, but like, I don't know if they just didn't survive or she doesn't like how they're spreading. So we're probably, I'm going to replace them with some poppies. We listen to Ember in the Ashes. I'm about 38% through it right now. It's get, it's still entertaining me. Um, but it's not quite hooking me the way I had hoped. So I, it's one of those ones where at this time, I'm not sure if I will continue on with the series. No, one thing I definitely need to do is want to zoom out. Um, but is to rinse and wash off my shoes and boots from when I went out collecting. Uh, those are the hazel sticks, by the way, um, that are cleaned. Um, I think I finally, I think I'm just done because I, I don't want to risk getting any more <laughs> uh, poison oak. But what I do need to do is wash my boots and shoes with Technu to make sure that they don't have any oils on them, as well as my purse that I had brought that day which is going to be interesting because that is wool and leather. <laughs> okay, so I finished Our Native Bees by Paige Embry. That is still too close. Um, gardened. Hi. <laughs> you want to say hi to them? Um, yes. Our Native Bees by Paige Embry. It wasn't bad. Um, it is very textbooky, I feel like. So I lost there was some bits and pieces that I skimmed through just because it <laughs> got a little slow. Um, I am picking up Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manasala, I believe. Um, but I think right now I'm going to go take a nice lukewarm bath to try to ease some of this brush as well as to clean myself off from gardening as well as let Riley outside. <laughs> um, and then start dinner. I did just get off the phone with my grandma and let her know, give her a happy Mother's Day. Um, mom should be home here shortly. She went inland to go see the boat races um, that typically start on Mother's Day weekend. Um, 
but yeah, we gotta go clean up a bit and then start dinner so that that's ready by the time she gets home. So I'm super bummed though, cause I had all these um, bath and body stuff that I ordered from Sequoia, which is a, an indigenous um, bath and body uh, shop but they're not here yet, which is my bad for one, ordering late. Um, but two, I think also should kind of just expect mail to be late. I did get some book mail today, <laughs> but it wasn't what I expected. It is the, uh, part of the Bone Witch series, but it's the last book. It's pretty gorgeous, but I'll show you guys uh, it's still gorgeous, but I'll show you guys when I get the whole series in, because for some reason I got a notification today that said that the Heart Forger, which is the second book, just shipped today, so that was odd. Um, hi. Hi, cruisers. I swear he thinks he's a cat. Huh. <laughs> hi. Yes. Hi, honey. He got a bath yesterday, so he's timid with me right now. But yes, so I think I'm gonna draw myself a bath and read some arsenic and adobo. Um, and then fix dinner, and we'll see where we go after that. Hi, so it's actually Tuesday, May 11th, that I forgot to close this out, so um, I just, so for the vlog, I read Our Native Bees um, by Paige Embry and really enjoyed it. I think it's giving it a 3.75 just because I did enjoy it. I think it's a great jumping off point and it fulfilled a curiosity that I've been having about um, bees and pollinators, but I definitely want to seek other books um, about that same knowledge. So I think that that's a great starting point and I also I uh, thought it was got a little dense at times, and I think by the end of it, I ultimately, by like the 100 page mark, I was kind of done, um, but it's also just because I didn't have a, <laughs> spend a whole lot of time picking it up, and I think it was one of those things where I just wanted to get on to the next book, but ultimately I did enjoy it, and I do recommend it if you are at all curious about reading about native pollinators of North America. Um, I also made it to 50% of the way in to, sorry for my shaky camera, into uh, uh, Ember in the Ashes by somebody here. It's still entertaining me for the most part. I'm finding that really with YA fantasy, I just don't enjoy this whole finding our feelings out for the first time type of deal. This whole like, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, also, I am wearing my dress funny because my, chest is currently um, fairly sensitive right now due to uh, poison oak. So that's another thing too is that we're slowly but surely getting over our poison oak. I see we because my partner has it as well and at this point he has it worse than I do. Thankfully he was able to get a doctor's appointment this morning and get some steroids as well um, because it was over 80% of his back and he has a worse reaction to it than I do and I'm the one that had direct contact with the plant. So that's definitely saying something. Um, so I have little spots here and there that have some inflammation and some, some sensitivity. So we'll see. And I your my face is pretty much cleared up. There's a little couple spots that I still feel a rash and I'll probably won't be wearing makeup for the next week or so just to be sure. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, and I did start Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manasella. Um, so far, it's entertaining. Um, it's I think it's too soon to tell. I'm only like 50 pages in, but so far I'm. Um, this is one that I have been anticipating just because I really like the darker humor aspect of it and considering it's supposed to be a cozy mystery thriller. Um, I'm kind of excited about it. So yeah, we'll see. But yeah, if you enjoyed this at all, if you 
made it this far, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't yet already, be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell icon to get notified when I post new content. This is my first vlog. It's not so much about uh, reading, but plants and my thoughts on the books that I'm reading. I didn't get so, so many shots of actually reading and the beeping you hearing is at my laundry. <sighs> but I'm going to end it here for now and I'll see you in a video again here soon and I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading. Cheers!